Oh, amazing. Thank you for having me. I'll just share my screen. Brilliant. So we're all good. Oh, there we go. There's a good start. So yeah, thank you for having me. Uh, it's, it's great. So today I'm going to be talking about the key learnings that we went through for migrating from Flux 1 uh, to Flux 2. A uh, bit of an introduction before we get going. I'm Josh. I'm a DevOps engineer uh, at Ozzo. We manage infrastructure and create infrastructure for clients. And earlier this year, we migrated our clusters from Flux 1 to Flux 2. And today I'm going to go through the process uh, of, of what we discovered and of what we set up, etc. So just before I get into the crux of it, I'll give you a bit of uh, uh, explanation on the agenda. So I'll start off with discovery, then move on to design and reflection. On discovery, I'll give a bit of a background and we'll get to know uh, a bit about Flux2 and I'll talk about how we built out a solution uh, and the processes we went through that. Then I'll talk about our design, how we now manage client clusters centrally, what upgrade process we use to move our clients from Flux1 to Flux2 and ourselves internally. Uh, of this course, the cutoff process involved, and then I finish on reflection. So what we learned along the way and ideas for the future improvement, really. So I move on to the discovery. So before we can really uh, get into it, I'll, I'll give you a bit of background. So previously, as you could guess from the title, uh, we had Flux One, and with that support coming to the end back in the day, it really did give. We were hoping, and it did uh, bring an opportunity. Uh, for us to benefit from the toolkit it provides. The toolkit I'll go into a bit more detail in a later slide. An opportunity I'm really hoping for was that it would allow us to scale, allow us to update our infrastructure more easily. And really we're hoping that um, that we now know uh, it would give us an organized and repeatable structure. So if you look on the right hand side, previously what we had well, when we're managing clients, of course with Flux 1, for anyone that hasn't actually used Flux, I should mention it slight, uh, very quickly. So we'll offer Flux offers continuous delivery. So it helps automate the deployments of containers um, and your infrastructure uh, in the cluster. So for example, if you make a change to your uh, commit on your Git repository, for example, or your version control, and you push that up, Flux as the thing, the tool uh, that can make the automate those changes to be applied to the cluster. So there's a little bit of a background if people haven't used Flux before, so I don't want to just assume, but I'll get back to it now. So previously we had uh, <laughs> a cluster, um, a repository um, per cluster, which is okay to begin with, but is it scaled and there's more and more clients uh, to manage? It did become difficult, um, it did become difficult to manage and there wasn't much repeatability there. Um, at all really. So if we bought a new client and there's some similar same infrastructure to a previous client, we couldn't benefit from that existing infrastructure as such. We had to sort of copy and paste it over and when updates needed to happen it, it became difficult. We had a essentially a list of the repositories, the code in there, um, and it wasn't particularly amazing. Still great with the automation side, but the app and infrastructure code uh, was cut into one. So really, um, the approach we wanted, you can see on the right hand side, is we really want to take benefit of what Flux2 offers, uh, where you can have multiple repositories per cluster. So that was the goal we wanted to achieve. But to be able to do that, uh, we used our internal also discovery framework, uh, design, discovery and design framework. And I go into a little bit of detail about that now. It's a shortened down version for the talk because uh, I've got only got a limited uh, amount of time. But just to go for it quickly, generally we come up with a problem. Uh, we think of a definition for that. Uh, we think of, so we generally come up with a list of questions, for example. Uh, we then think of the dis solution for that. So we go for a discovery phase. Uh, we, we determine if it's a valid concept or not, and then we implement. But we always take an iterative approach. So there's some steps to the bottom left. Uh, we, as I said, normally gather requirements. So the toolkit, I'll come into a bit later. We, of course, of that, we needed to learn a bit about the toolkit and design phase of how we would implement it, refine it, et cetera, until we're finally happy with a solution. So it's a sort of very watered down version. So within our discovery of when we were doing it back in the day, we, we weren't very familiar with Flux2. It was, it was of course, new. So one of the first things we wanted to discover were what the differences were so we could compare them. So previously within Flux1, um, there was a sync methodology, uh, well, a sync uh, command, a, sync, a command, not a methodology. Um, and when you say, for example, um, installed Flux 1 previously, you could set an interval that generally be five minutes, et cetera, would 
uh, you know, uh, apply those changes and wait. But occasionally, you wanted to force those changes, you would use a sync command, so it wouldn't wait, and you would force them yourself in the CLI. Um, and when you're adding new infrastructure, so on a test and staging environment, uh, reason, you know, it does happen occasionally, you know, introducing it, you know, your, your, your manifest might be slightly wrong, might have an indentation or wrong somewhere, etc., and it wouldn't apply to a cluster. So you would have to go into the cluster, look at the flux logs, tell them, and check the process and then go back, uh, which is okay, but you know, you've got an extra step with that. Where with Flux 2, they've introduced something called Reconcile, which is great, really good actually. Um, and the great benefit of that gives you instant feedback. So when we're applying, say for instance, um, a new harm chart, uh, I don't know, a certificate manager, for example, uh, that manages certificate free domains, and we've got an indentation wrong, so the YAML definition's wrong. Um, it would tell us straight away on the CLI, which is great. So as I say, customization, I'll talk about what customization is in a bit as well. It would say something wrong, indentation wrong on line floor, and that feedback would be instant, so you could go fix it. So you no longer have to go into the cluster, into the pod, into the logs and tail, which is great. And of course, within Flux 1, mentioned it earlier, you can have one repo per cluster, and it did make it difficult to scale and manage. Uh, we found on a, from a certain size. But now um, you can have multiple Git sources, so that's multiple repositories per cluster, which is which is great. And you specify a path, so what do I mean by that? So when you install Flux, there's a command called Flux Bootstrap. I don't really have enough time to go into too much detail now, but their documentation is great on it. You can you would use Flux Bootstrap to install your Git source, so that could be infrastructure repository. You then specify a path so it could be uh, staging slash clusters uh, slash client one, for example. Um, no, cluster slash staging slash client one, that'd be a better order. Um, and then when anything that's applied inside of client one, um, um, those changes would be applied by Flux. So it uses the path to add a context. Um, you can only have one context per cluster. Um, um, and then if you wanted to add another repository for an app repository, you would add a git source and specify a new path, which could be uh, uh, staging um, client one application, for example. Uh, probably not the best direct examples, but hopefully you get the idea. We can add an infrastructure repository and uh, an app repository, specify different paths for each. So when we update the Git repository, it will apply it only to that. And previously in Flux 1, you couldn't suspend the sync and occasionally we have stakeholders that want to update an application environment variable, for example, and they don't want that automated. They want to have the control to do that. So what we have to do is a bit of work around. We have to set the interval uh, to like say a year. So it wouldn't automatically apply it every five minutes. And the client then in the evening or when one suits them would apply it manually, they'd be happy and check it, et cetera. But the problem with that, it meant if we needed to make infrastructure changes around the same time, we would have to force the sync as well because we set the interval so large to such a large amount, um, which is loses the automation side, isn't it? The whole kit ops principle, the flow, we're having to confide, it sort of messed up the whole proce uh, the process. Where now um, you can, with Reconcile, which is now called, uh, you can suspend them um, and you can do that across multiple sources, which is great. So say for an example, the client monitor updates an environment available in an app, we could suspend it specifically for their app uh, they could then apply that when they needed to, and we can do infrastructure changes. And Flux would, you know, automate, uh, keep the automation side of that, which is really, really good. Uh, patch management wasn't available, so patch management gives you more control. So uh, within that, you could have a pod, um, and then we could patch, say, for example, increase the CPU and memory of it, um, which is great. So quick example I'll go on to, I'll leave that, just remember that patch management, I'll go on to an example when I talk about the toolkit in a minute. Image automation used to be an annotation per pod, where now, uh, so you, you do your manifest and you specify an annotation, but now it's changed to image repositories and policy, so you, you could have uh, multiple uh, repositories, so from your container registry, and then the policy would essentially say, this is a send var 1.0, et cetera, um, if anything changes, uh, within our container registry with this semvar, i.e. this policy, update our image. And what's really good about the image repository is actually it sells you all the tags and all the repositories you've got available, which is really useful for debugging and, and really homing if it's going to get the right image or if it's got the right image, and because it tells you what repositories it's grabbed and what tags are available, which is really, really good. And there's a lot of flexibility now, so uh, compared to Flux1, Flux1 is a bit of a monolith, um, which is Hopefully I'm saying this right now, which I imagine would have been a 
more difficult for the maintainers to maintain because it's so large and invite people to do it. Where now it's been broken up into uh, the, the GitOps toolkit. So really in a nutshell, Flux2, we discovered, um, there's more differences, but we thought these are the most notable and were interesting to us to make a decision to, to continue to move to Flux2. It enables uh, more control of the infrastructure and processes. So now I'll just briefly go into the GitOps toolkit. The documentation here, I've never mentioned it and people do mention it, but it is really good and I'd recommend checking it out if you haven't seen the GitOps toolkit because I've only got time to briefly uh, go through it. So what it offers is these uh, essentially five components, essentially. Um, a source controller, so as you can imagine, uh, it provides Git sources and manages and validates those repositories. So this will actually pull down um, when you do the Flux Bootstrap or the Git uh, to add a source, another repository, it will actually uh, clone the application for you and you know validate and make sure that's okay, etc. But it clone it and the source controller will be responsible for that. So I mentioned earlier about the patches where you could increase them, which is great because we have a client that had a very large repository and the source controller timed out essentially, uh, wasn't able to pull the repository down. So we added a patch to the source controller and upgraded the CPU and memory. Uh, and, and then it had enough resource and was able to pull down the uh, the repository. So that that was really good. Where before it would have been you know a bit more of a difficult situation, uh, which we was able to fix. A customized controller is responsible for configuration of manifests, um, patches, of course, and overlays. I come into overlays at the end of the presentation. This is something we want to use more of. Um, and obviously responsible for you know the reconcile. Uh, uh, making you customize objects, so i.e., your, um, you know, uh, if it's to let you know if something's been fetched successfully from your repositories, etc. There's a Helm controller, of course, manages, installs Helm upgrades, notification controller, so real time feedback, uh, incoming and outgoing from the cluster. So, for example, you can get it to tell you if it's successful or unsuccessful deployments uh, via Slack. And now there's an image. Image reflector and automation controller. Um, that goes back to how the image automations change. So uh, these essentially are responsible for uh, the authentication and uh, well, the automation side of pulling images down. So when you have new images on your container registries, pulling them down, making the commits, the manifests, etc. Um, so it's really useful. And the good thing about the toolkits is you can decide what components to use. So say for example, we have a client that didn't want Helm, we could just leave out the hand controller you know which is great so you're quite flexible and if they we had a client that didn't need the automation side for whatever reason we could just not include those components so it's really nice how you can be granular granular uh, with it uh, which is really nice so within that just before i go into the design phase what we really liked was the flexibility the scaling options flex uh, offered and we we're happy to move then uh, to the design phase which was you know, coming up with a repository that could manage multiple client clusters, um, which is great. So to do this, um, I'm just moving my zoom icon because it's just it's just gone in the way. There we go. So just before I touch on how we did this, you notice earlier we used the Ozu, uh, you know, our design methodologies, a set of questions. We had many, but these are the multiple ones we came up with back in the day. So what we wanted to discover was how could we manage multiple clusters from one repo? Uh, how can we retain independent app repo access per client? So how can the client own that? How can we use it? Can we use our existing monitoring permissions? And how can we migrate with zero downtime? Those are questions we wanted to answer. So what we ended up coming up with, um, we took um, um, influence from the multi-tenancy back in the day, which we really liked, but didn't quite offer what we needed, but we definitely liked the concept. So within that uh, concept, the client multi-tenancy, you would have a single cluster where multiple teams could have their own namespace and be responsible for their own infrastructure. But what we need is it was one repository to manage multiple client clusters. So what we came up with, if you can see on the right hand side in purple, also, <laughs> um, we would have we have a demo essentially directory attached to a cluster. And any Helm chat configurations that our clients have or new clients have, we add there. And the reason for that is if we need to make updates to um, a client's Helm chart for whatever reason, say, for instance, car main staging, uh, I could refer back to Cert Manager because I think it's a nice, easy example. And um, we need to upgrade their version. We could check it in our own cluster first, validate it's okay, etc., then put a pull request then uh, for client A, for example, uh, change the version, um, check with the client, then we could merge that in for the changes to be applied. We really liked how that potential that that solution there would you know give us 
the safe as such um, and been able to do it within one repository. And then if we could repeat the process then, for example, client C, they needed to update the, the same Helm chart for them, they could confirm it. Uh, we can merge that in, um, uh, you know, and, and people could be happy. And then when new clients come on board, etc., we can put them within this repository, etc., um, and just create a directory for them. So in a nutshell, when a client comes on board, we have create a directory specific for them, for the protection stage environment, install Flux, um, uh, with Flux Bootstrap, um, install that, set the path, and then add a Git source separately. So the great thing we really like about the app repos that you could have but now our infrastructure, which is managed here, as you can see, and then the app side, uh, which is a separate repository, which we'll create for the client, where they can manage specifically their app code. And really to us, that helps improve security as well, you know, because we give access to those that, that really need it. So, so, for example, the client or the developer or developer, et cetera, needs to update environment available on application. They could do that in the app repository. To the pull request, get it merged in, it's all happy. They don't need to see the infrastructure. So back previously, we did have some issues where an engineer would make a pull request to change some app code, but for some reason, pull a pull request to change some infrastructure, which obviously you didn't want. And it was tricky, um, you know, where now they don't even need to worry about that, don't need to see it, which is we read out the, 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 the concept. So we, that's what we ended up going with. Lovely, thank you, almost finished. Yeah, thank you. And then we managed now, yeah, we decided that we could use Datadog to monitor clusters. We could still use our rollback and of course notification controller. And the way we came to migrate the zero downtime is we came up with a few approaches. Uh, we set up a fresh cluster of Flux 1 and 2 and a separate cluster of Flux 2 installed. And ultimately we came up with um, the migration approach. Um, I'll speed this up now because I've got um, quickly because I'm probably coming towards the end of my time. Um, the migration approach we ended up coming up with, uh, with the clients, was creating a separate cluster with Flux 2 installed, um, migrating all of the manifests and applications over there. The clients could do the regression tests on separate cluster, make sure it's okay, et cetera, whilst leaving the production cluster as it is. And then when the clients were happy, we just did a DNS switch over to the, uh, the cluster of Flux 2 installed and just left the old cluster idle for how long the client needed it for. So the process was, was nice and smooth. So quick reflections in summary, we can get instant feedback on deployments now. Multiple Git sources helps us a lot. Upgrading Flux 1 and Flux 2 in the production environment, you know, does carry risk of downtime. We recommend a separate cluster, Flux 2, uh, fresh installation, doing your regression and your tests and allowing the client to be in control and also our sales for our own stuff, et cetera. Um, and I'll quickly go on to looking forward. So what we want to do is create um, um, a pull request, um, and the, which, so within the ecosystem, it does move very quickly. So for example, I upgraded a client yesterday to Flux 0 0.330 and about two o'clock, Stefan posted on the community that free uh, free dot one was available, so it moves quickly. I like manually have to change that. We want to create a pull request that looks for those changes and creates a PR for us to automate that. And just a quick one on overlays to finish off. At the moment, we have Helm charts duplicated. Um, with an overlay, you can have one, say for example, Helm chart, say the cert manager, in a directory called bases, and then in client A staging, we could refer to that cert manager base, just reference it. And with the overlay, we could just change the namespace, so we can take and then client b could just reference that as well so what we can end up with is when we need to update versions updated in one place and with the overlays on the different client directories uh, which is great we could just um merge um ch well, change it in one place but at the moment we have to do a pull request on each one but it, it's tricky because we might have client a and client b for example may want to um uh, you know, have the updates added in different times. So we're still working that out, but we would like to take influence of overlays more. Um, and that is me. Uh, so I have to rush the end slightly because I'm just conscious of the time. Uh, but yeah, really that's our learnings from migrating from Flux 1 to Flux 2. Thank you. Hi, Josh. Thank you so much for that. Can you hear me? Yeah, 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 yeah. No, thank oh, you. Great. I talked fast <laughs> at the end. Sorry about the quick talking, but no, I, I've got a, I've got a clock, and I was very conscious of um. Yeah. Oh well. <laughs> no, loads of people were enjoying it. <laughs> it's okay. Loads <laughs> of people were 
in the chat there i think if you go over to the slack channel you're going to realize that there's a lot of questions we were seeing a lot on youtube as well that you were getting really good praise so thank you so much oh lovely there was more i'd like to say but hey you know yeah we're human we've got the time frames there so i really appreciate uh allowing me to talk as well and i love the work you guys are doing please keep it up <laughs> I'm oh sure thank will. you so much for supporting us that's great that's great <laughs> i'll uh should I drop off now? <laughs> yeah, go. Yeah. That's it. Go to Slack, answer some questions, Lovely and stuff. have a Thank great you. day. And you. Thank you very much. Take care.